Pet LA is saying thanks as always for the amazing content and analysis, you, you guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How do you see the uprisings in Iran and PRC, which is the People's Republic of China, uh, affecting each other and or magnifying the, the destabilizing and rebellious um, energy globally, if at all? That's a good question. All right. So I was very surprised to see some people in China in so as they're protesting against the CCP okay and by the way it's not just the protest in China it's not just about the COVID like that right there that's what that was what started it that was yeah. the ignited all of it but it's now becoming a lot more than that right mm -hmm. but I was surprised that I saw I don't know if you heard it heard, heard this some people in China among the chants had support for the Iranian protests. Oh, really? I did not hear that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I was like wow. guys, you're on your third day of your protests. What did wow. you like? How it's like, bold stance? <laughs> yeah, but because the Chinese people have been stereotypically been portrayed as people who are just followers. They keep their head down yeah. and they don't show much care for people around them and it's just like try to not disturb anything so that you don't get in trouble and there are videos of from china showing that oh there's somebody dying in the street or in trouble and nobody's helping them but so that stereotype is now being questioned when people in china are protesting and in the middle of their chance they were chanting in in support of um uh, eager Muslims in China and mm. Iranians, which is it's awesome. Yeah, I mean that was weird. That was like, yeah, I did not expect that. Okay, yeah. uh, I had to screenshot that because I'm like, is this this is like, is this made up? Like I had to screenshot oh. the news. Um, you know, actually, let me show this. It's in Persian because I was watching Persian news. Uh, but because people might not believe what, because I didn't believe it. I was like, yeah. I have, I have to capture this <laughs> because this does not seem right. Like, yeah. you know, like I had to like, I, I think they're definitely going to play off each other. I don't see why they wouldn't. Right. I mean, we're, we're now in a boat where we have the ability to be so connected with these, these types of movements around the world that I really do feel like more and more groups of people that are being oppressed that are being taken advantage of by shitty autocratic regimes like i think they they are we are going to see more solidarity between them. at least i hope so because i think i think that magnifies the voice of it right that magnifies how how much impact this this can actually have so um i'm i'm all for it like Okay, so this is not made up. Okay, so first of all, wow. the news that I'm reading here it says "Eterazata bisabakadachi," which means un, un, um, unprecedented uh, uprisings in China, and then the, in white it says "Hamayat motarizin Chini as Muslimanane Uyghur va motarizan der Iran." I don't know how you say that in Persian. So. It says um, the, it says the, the support of uh, Chinese um, protesters from uh, um, of Uyghur, Uyghur, Uyghur Muslims and Iranian protesters. Wow. So and also, so I was like, is this real? Maybe the news got it wrong because I couldn't believe it. Right. Engage an American who speaks Chinese says yes. Now we're having confirmation in the live chat as well. Yes, I heard it in Mandarin. I cannot believe that. Gaijin America, can you explain what would motivate? Because mm. these Chinese protesters have a lot of their own problems that they have to deal with when it comes to yes. their freedom. I mean, they're they're risking everything. Yeah. Okay. Like the 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 Chinese protesters, the things that they're chanting, people have disappeared in half a day for yeah. things for much less. Because yeah. the protests that recently the CCP have been allowing are protests against certain corporations or local government 
as a way to make sure that there is no because they realize that you have to allow some protest because there's some um, anger that was brewing and they realized that they cannot contain this anger. So they allowed protests as long as it wasn't directed at CCP. Now these protests for the first time since Tiananmen Square is being directed right at the CCP. So this is unusual. People have been, uh, people have been, you know, um, disappeared for much, much less. And I've seen, oh, I can't show that, can I? Um, I've seen so, such harsh crackdown on Ch in China on the people, uh, I've seen car Chinese car r just driving over people. Yeah, and I don't, I, I don't think I can show that here on YouTube. So probably not. Just go look that, look that up. But anyway, so that's um, I do want to answer the question though because the question is about is a lot more than that. How do you see the uprising in Iran and PRC affecting each other? Okay, so I think the the battle for the future of this planet is between the forces of liberalism and the forces of tyranny, right? And there are alarming trends and also hopeful reactions, right? We see the rise of anti-liberalism, okay, in many places around the world. And a lot of it is because of religion, except in two places, in Russia and China, okay? So the forces for illiberalism right now is the CCP, Putin, uh, the BJP in India, some parts of the BJP in India, because some part of it is really pro-LGBT, but some parts of it is anti-Muslim. Um, so some parts of the BJP. Um, and then we have GOP. Um, the GOP, which yeah. is the biggest threat right now. Um, and also the rise of far right in Europe, especially in Italy and Sweden and in some other places, right? Yep. So these are the elements of illiberalism challenging our future, this planet's future, okay? And the biggest one is the GOP. If they, if they manage to get the White House, um, it's going to be really difficult to um and also by the way the islamic republic of iran okay so that too um but you all so this is very worrying all these illiberal um trends coming back because we seem to be going in a very good direction for a while right the things that are hopeful on the other hand is ukraine's resistance to putin and almost doing picking up so much of this burden uh, of saving the planet, okay? Because Ukraine is not just defending Ukraine right now. Ukraine, by defeating Putin, if Putin, Putin's humiliation is upholding the norms and standards that has brought this liberal order around the world that has kept the world a much safer and, and stable place since world war ii okay so ukraine defeating russia is would be a defeat of trying to undo that those norms yeah. and those standards okay yeah. and it's a warning to the to the, everyone else in this in the world that in every other country that was because if putin was successful it would create a lot of motive and didn't go unchallenged it would basically start a whole bunch of other countries trying to do the same thing especially in the yeah. middle east and africa right yeah. it would it would be a disaster so ukraine is saving the planet by by resisting putin's advances um but iran iranian people rising up to their tyrants has been part of a hopeful um trend because we us liberals have this sometimes too much of a hopeful perspective mm. that mm. tyranny will not last that people will rise up that democracy and liberalism and secularism is what people want so much that no tyrant can hold people for too long if they try that right and sometimes we're like yeah but really like 
can does it happen and when you see people in iran rise up against all odds against a force that they should not be able to challenge and come out in such force and able to almost bring the islamic republic of iran to its knees you think like okay maybe it's true maybe because we don't want to be waiting for united states or europe to just come and save the day because if you're dependent on forces like that then you have to give in to their human rights violations and just accept it but if it is just the people that always will come out and challenge tyranny as people have proven in iran then there is hope for the future of this planet and then you go on to in china because as much as iranian people rising up against their government is surprising because you think that they have no chance okay it is even more surprising for that to happen in china because the chinese government the ccp is a lot more effective at crushing dissent than the islamic republic is like every single chinese citizen in china is under constant monitoring under a microscope in a way that the islamic republic of iran can never achieve and you we we were under this assumption that the chinese people have been put in such level of submission that even the thought of protesting against the central government was something that they would just crush within them before it ever had a chance to come out and express itself and the chinese people have proven us wrong that there is still a, a hope a, a motivation to fight for freedom even in such dark places such that for hope in places where such hope seemed to have been crushed so effectively that it would never grow again you see hope still grows in a place like china so if it could grow in a place like china then it can grow anywhere yeah yeah and it's it's so you ask how do these affect each other they give each other hope they give each other motivation ukrainian people are sub in support of iranian people against their government okay and they and we 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 had a question recently also about racism and ethnic tensions right that as as much as we don't like to admit it um in these places in china and iran there's a lot of racism right and because there's a lot of racism unfortunately sometimes people associate their cooperation of ccp with the islamic republic of iran as something that the chinese people are in support of right just so like just like we saw a lot of people around the world because of the terrorist activities that the Islamic Republic is involved with, a lot of people uh, associated Iranian people with activities like that. But when the Iranian people rose up against the government, they they distanced themselves from such values, right? And they brought a lot of they 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 bought themselves a respect around the world, right? So in Iran, because Iranian a lot of Iranian people hate their government, hate their regime, there was a lot of there's some ethnic tension between the Iranian people and Chinese people. But now the Chinese people are showing the Iranian people, we're not the CCP. And there's a lot of respect now in Iran for the Chinese people. Okay. Yeah. And this is what, this is how you can bring people who are so far away in their struggle, in their fight for democracy and freedom. Okay. They feel so close. It, so close to each other even with all the geographic barrier with the language barrier with the history barrier people that seem to have nothing to do with each other all of a sudden feel connected with each other because they because they're all human and humans prefer better lives prefer free lives prefer lives that where they are in charge of their own destiny and they share that no matter how much different they are in everything else they share that and they could bond over that and what that could eventually bring about is a unity or a cooperation between people all around the world in the struggle with each other for a freer a more liberal world anyways yeah. i talk so much no i think you did no i think it was all very good man i i totally agree with with um so much of that 
and again, just I think the if the way that if the way that these types of events are handled by the regime in Iran or or China, um, if it is one where it results in um, mass slaughter of their people, uh, which has happened in the past, um, I think that emboldens the other side to feel like they can get away with that without the the international community standing up against that and holding them accountable. Um, which is why I agree so strongly when you say things like, you know, um, Ukraine losing, you know, their their country essentially to to this Russian uh, Putin invaded invasion, right? That is something that has ramifications for all other countries around the world. And I, I totally agree with that. And the same here. If we start seeing such atrocities like we have seen in the past from the uh, Iranian regime, from the CCP, if we start seeing that and we as a global community do not stand up and push back against that, other autocrats like that will be emboldened to take such steps. So yeah, I, I just, I totally agree. And that's why I love, I love the hard stance you have on that because I, I just, I just think it is that important, you know? Yeah. Somebody is agreeing with you. True. Yeah. So Eric is saying, yes, rarity, this Russian invasion, the problem goes beyond. Yeah. True. Very true. Um, you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.